Hey guys, welcome to the show and today we're going to be talking about how to run a successful YouTube channel. A little bit different to our normal content about credit cards, but when people saw the demonetization video, they were asking about this in the comments, perhaps they're YouTubers themselves or they're just curious about it, so here goes. Uh, so I run two YouTube channels, in fact it's me uh, and my buddy Alan, who you've probably seen as the Travel Ninja, you often see him in a robe. Uh, yeah, we run a company that owns two YouTube channels, the Credit Shifu, which is this channel about credit cards, and Generation Tech, which is a channel uh, about science fiction, mainly about Star Wars, Star Trek, that kind of thing. Very geeky, a lot of fun. Um, these two channels, uh, in one year, Credit Shifu has gone from basically zero to 23,000 subscribers and Generation Tech has gone from about 5,000 subscribers uh, at the beginning of this year uh, to about 113,000 or 100, 100 and something thousand uh, in about nine months. So both within a year we've seen massive growth on both channels. And I've done something similar with channels I've been involved with over the past five years. Uh, some of the channels I've worked on have about half a million subscribers. Uh, but these are the two I'm working on right now, so I'll use these as examples for what I'm going to talk about. So the biggest question a lot of new YouTubers will ask is how do you get from say like zero subscribers uh, to you know several thousand? How do you get that initial boost, get your video in front of some eyeballs? And it is a little bit tricky. So say you do a video, you, you wanna be a vlogger, right? You've seen Casey Neistat and you're like, yeah, I wanna be a vlogger. Uh, you're called John and you do a video and you call it John's Vlog Episode One and there's a picture of you on the thumbnail. The thumbnail is the small picture, by the way, that accompanies the title of the video. Um, and it's called John's Vlog Part 1 or Episode 1. No one is going to be interested in that because A, you're not a celebrity, okay, so no one knows who you are. Uh, the title is boring, no one knows what's going to happen in that vlog. And, uh, you know, the thumbnail, it's just your face, they don't know what's going to happen either. Um, so, you need to use something that is already popular as kind of like a springboard, okay, at the beginning. This is kind of what YouTube channels have to do now. In the past, perhaps it wasn't like this, but it's so saturated. There are so many people competing for views that the quickest and easiest way to get big at the beginning is to make videos on already trending topics or using topics that people are already searching for. So let's use the example of John's vlog. Say John lives in New York. Well, an instant you know, improvement would be John's NYC vlog, all right? John's New York vlog, right? And then you show the New York skyline in the picture. That might get you a few more views, all right? Because that's, maybe people are thinking about moving to NYC or going on vacation, holiday there. They can, they'll probably be interested in looking at your vlog. So you're definitely gonna get a few more views with that than with just John's vlog. Um, but that's not really trending. Unless something really big happened in New York at that time and it was in the news or whatever, uh, it's not really going to be trending. So how do we make videos about already trending topics? Well, I'll give you the examples with my channels. So first of all, you pick a niche, okay, what niche you want to be in, okay? Maybe you're a channel about credit cards, or you're a channel about beauty, or a channel about uh, science fiction, or whatever, okay? And then within that niche, you need to look at what is popular. What are people talking about? What is the most uh, talked about news story in that niche. So I started the Credit Shifu channel just after the Chase Sapphire Reserve came out, okay? And at that time, it was a really popular card. Everyone was talking about it, the points guy, and you know, all the bloggers were talking about the Chase Sapphire Reserve. My first video wasn't about the Sapphire Reserve, it was about the Hilton Honors card, and there was no news about it. It was not, not in the news at that time. That video got very little views, a few hundred, when I first uploaded it, okay? But when I uploaded my second video, how to get approved for the Chase Sapphire Reserve, uh, it exploded. And you can see in my back end, um, the Hilton Honors video, since last year, it has accumulated 7,000 views. The Chase Sapphire Reserve, it's over 70,000, all right? Over 10 times as many views. And that's because I had made a video on a trending topic that people were actually looking for, okay? People were searching for it, it was getting, showing up in suggested videos next to other videos on YouTube that are about the Sapphire Reserve. Uh, because it was a hot topic at that time. Uh, and we had the same thing uh, on our other channel, Generation Tech. We started it just around the time that the new Star Wars movie was coming out, and we had a lot of hit videos, uh, you know, the, the Force Awakens, not the newest, newest one, but the new one of the new series of movies. And uh, we had loads of hits, and we did a video called Who's Ray's Father? And everyone wanted to know. We were like, oh, everyone was talking about that. Who is Ray's father, right? And we did a video uh, putting out some theories, and that was like our first big hit on that channel too, covering an already trending topic. Now let's look at title and thumbnail. We'll go back to my Chase Sapphire Reserve. You'll notice um, I put the keyword 
Chase Sapphire Reserve at the beginning of the title. So it's Chase Sapphire Reserve, colon, how to get approved. It's not how to get approved for the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Generally, putting your keywords at the beginning of your title, uh, maybe not the first word, but you know, definitely the beginning half of your title, that's better for the YouTube algorithm. It works better, it indexes your video better, uh, there's more chance of it showing up. Uh, then you need a description, which you need to repeat your keywords again in the description. Uh, and then you've got tags, and you need to repeat your keywords again in the tags. But saying this, your description shouldn't be like Chase Sapphire Reserve, Chase Sapphire Reserve, Chase Sapphire Reserve, okay? It, YouTube, uh, Google is too clever for that. It knows you're trying to gain the system. So just write naturally, okay? Uh, in SEO and stuff, they call it keyword density. You just, you know, if your keyword density is too high, you're gaming the system, they'll know it. If it's too low, then you're not gonna get views. So just write naturally. Talk about the thing that has the keywords in it, right, that topic. Uh, then you've got tags. You definitely want to put as many tags as you can, uh, and that gives you the uh, the biggest chance of uh, getting views. And perhaps you don't put tags, um, in addition to the tags about that thing, right, that you're talking about, Chase Sapphire Reserve, you can also put tags about, say, other things that are connected, sort of Amex uh, Platinum Card, which is the rival to the Chase Sapphire Reserve, okay? And people who are interested in the Amex Platinum may also be interested in Chase Sapphire Reserve, et cetera. That's just using the credit card channel uh, as a example. Okay, so going back to the title as well, uh, with your title, it's good to have words such as how, why, uh, for free, whatever, in the title, because that kind of entices people to click. They're gonna find out how to do something. They're gonna find out why something is. Often if your title has a question mark, they feel like, oh, I can find out the answer to this question by watching this video. So my Chase Sapphire Reserve, how to get approved video, oh, the Chase Sapphire Reserve, that's something desirable, I wanna have that. Oh, this video is gonna tell me how I can get it. So I'll click, I'm gonna find out something useful, okay? And it's proven that having the words how, why, how to get something for free, these kind of things in the title gives you a much higher chance of people clicking. Um, now let's look at the thumbnail. So, <clears throat> With this Chase Sapphire Reserve video, you've got the credit card in big. It really stands out, uh, and basically for that one, that's all you need. Uh, let's look at another video now, the most popular video on my channel, over 200,000 views as of recording this video, how to climb the credit card ladder. So again, you see in the title, how to, all right, how to do something that already boosts it. Uh, and then the thumbnail, it's quite interesting. So at the beginning, I was worrying, will this thumbnail be too small? Because thumbnails do appear very small sometimes, especially on the desktop version. So clarity is king, okay? You need to be able to see clearly what it is. Uh, in the mobile app, they're a little bit bigger. Um, but this thumbnail, the way it was designed, it worked out okay. So basically we've got a gradient in the background that was made on Photoshop, just uh, white to blue, and then a ladder and credit cards on each rung of the ladder are numbered one, two, three, four, five, and then obviously our credit shifu logo in the corner. And it turns out people were intrigued by this. They can clearly see the ladder. The credit cards, okay, you might not be able to see clearly which credit card exactly that is when you're, when you're looking at it very small. Um, but it actually doesn't matter because you, know, you get the gist of what the video is about. How to climb the credit card ladder. The ladder stands out really well. You can kind of make out that these are credit cards on each rung and it's one, two, three, four, five. So you're gonna be wondering, ooh, what credit card is on each one of the rung of the ladder? How do I move up this ladder of credit cards, okay? And again, it's got how to in the title, so it really entices people to click. So that's getting people to click on your video. Uh, but then what about your actual content? Well, that's really down to you. Um, you know, you have to have something interesting to talk about. Uh, you have to talk in an interesting way. Uh, I can give you some tips on hosting. Uh, if you're talking to the camera, you need to look at the camera 100% of the time. You know, if you look away, you kind of end up looking sort of like shifty, like something is going on like off the screen and you're not really paying attention to, to what your viewers are, are saying, okay? So that's a mistake you can clear up right at the beginning. You have to look at the camera 100% of the time. Um, obviously, everything on YouTube is HD now, so you need to have an HD camera. Uh, even your iPhone shoots in HD, so it shouldn't be a problem, although I don't recommend using an iPhone unless it's the last resort. You could use a sort of reasonably priced DSLR camera, uh, like the Canon like Rebel series or even a 5D if you've got a bit more money to buy something like that. Um, you can also use like a vlogging camera like uh, this one, which is the uh, Canon G7X. And the cool thing about this one is that the screen opens up. So a lot of those videos um, that I've shot outside, like aircraft, um, airplane reviews, hotel reviews, airport lounge reviews, I actually use this camera uh, rather than the large camera, the large 5D. And that's because it's a little bit more discreet because I often haven't asked for permission to film. So I just sort of, I like, you know, kind of, going around with this. And also for vlogging, you can, you know, you can flip that up and then you can talk to the camera like directly 
Um, obviously, don't hold it this close to your face. I'm just doing that to demonstrate. It should be like here. Um, and you can see yourself in the image. So if you're vlogging out and about, this is a great camera, Canon G7X. Um, if you're inside um, at home, you want like a larger DSLR camera. It's a bit better. Um, and also what you want to do when you shoot, um, your lighting needs to be nice. I'm actually right next to a window on the left and I've got a light on to the right. And uh, my white balance is kind of balanced between natural light and uh, tungsten light. Um, don't worry if you don't understand that. That's something that if you do this, you have to get into photography a little bit and learn a bit, little bit about it. You can always just use auto settings. I use all manual, but you could just use auto and that'll automatically balance for you. Um, at the beginning, so you need to make sure you're lit well, your face is lit well. Um, if you have shadows under your eyes or whatever, that's no good, okay, that doesn't look good. Um, <clears throat> you also need to uh, blur your background a little bit, so people who know about photography, when you open up the aperture of the camera, the focal range decreases, and so I'm in focus, but my background is not in focus. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like when the background is in focus, okay, check that out. And it doesn't look as professional, does it? So blurring the background like this, like I am now, really kind of makes you pop out. It makes you stand out from the background. And that's what you see in Hollywood movies. The backgrounds are always blurred when, when there are close-ups on people. Um, and so it's much more professional looking. So that's an instant, if you do that, that's an instant point. People will just, they won't know exactly why, but when they watch your video, they'll just feel it's more professional. Then we have sound. Um, sound is very important. So right now I'm using a uh, condenser mic, a Rode condenser mic, which is this one. And I sometimes use a clip-on mic. Uh, you can see it in this shot. Um, it depends, you know. Um, I'm kind of experimenting with that clip-on mic at the moment. I actually am leaning towards the Rode condenser um, directional microphone. Uh, but you need to have good sound. If you have bad sound, that really influences people's enjoyment. Like this video that I shot outside with my vlogging camera. I just sat down in this park and thought I'd shoot a video for you guys talking about the Equifax hack and what you can do to protect yourself. The sound was really crap, there's a lot of wind noise and uh, probably people didn't like it that much. So we've talked about how to get discovered through uh, you know doing videos about trending topics, making nice thumbnails, good titles so that people are enticed to click and uh, a nice image and good quality content so that when, once people are watching they continue watching. Um, but how, how do you get them to subscribe? Well put very simply, just tell them to subscribe, okay? This is called a call to action, and normally at the end of the video, YouTubers will be like, oh, if you like our content, subscribe to our channel. It has been proven that telling people to subscribe, having this kind of call to action, can really help uh, actually getting people to subscribe. And once you've got several thousand subscribers, you can start doing videos that are less about trending topics and more about what you genuinely want to talk about. It has to be within your niche though. So I started off a channel about credit cards. I did a lot about the Sapphire Reserve when it was really very popular. But then once people liked my content and they liked the way I talked and everything like that, I started branching out. I did videos about other credit cards. I did videos about airline uh, frequent flyer programs, flight reviews, airport lounge reviews, hotel reviews, which is all in the same kind of sphere, but it's not directly connected to the trending videos I had on those those trending topics at the very beginning. But once people like you, uh, your subscribers, you know, if they really love you, they'll be willing to watch your video no matter what you're talking about. So guys, if you like what you've seen, and this video really was just a very, very quick look at this, okay? I hardly went into any detail. Uh, but if you like what you've seen, I am considering doing an actual course on this that I'll put on my website. People can sign up for it um, and, you know, go through the course. I'll probably charge a little bit of money for it, you know, maybe like the price of a cup of coffee or something. Um, but, you know, it's not going to be like a $100 course, no way. Um, but you know, if you're really interested and you'd like to see a course that goes through maybe in 10 lessons, like a very detailed look at uh, how to design a thumbnail, how to pick a title, how to do keywords, um, how to get started at the beginning, uh, and a lot of things that I haven't covered in this video that are all going to work to improve your chances at making it as a YouTuber, um, let me know in the comments. And if you're watching this video at a later date and I've already done that course, I will link to it in the description so go down there and click the link if it's there um, so guys what do you think please leave a comment below are you a youtuber or an aspiring youtuber i'd love to hear uh you know your thoughts as always i'm the credit shifu please subscribe to this channel there you go that's the call to action give this video a like and we'll see you next time bye